Welcome to the description of Cricket Visualization, which is a part of the Data Visualization course project. With this visualization, we try to tell a story of how the team has been performing over the last 10 years and how the various players have been contributing towards the success of the team. The key metric that we use is the batting performance of the team. We have four separate visualizations, which visualize the strike rate of a key batsman, the number of times the batsman has played in innings and the number of times it has resulted in a win or a loss for the team. A timeline fashion of all the matches that has been played by the team in the last 10 years according to the number of runs they have scored in each of the games as well as the margin by which the game was decided. Also we show the trends of the number of runs being scored per year by the team along with the contribution of each key batsman in the team. Now, initially, let's go ahead and select South Africa. At the bottom, we can see all the matches that South Africa has played. We can see the trend of what kind of a form the team has been. But to get more insight, we can actually use one of these filters at the, at the bottom. When we filter this based on runs, the data gets sorted based on the number of runs scored in each and every match. As we can clearly see, South Africa wins most of their matches whenever they score 300 or more number of runs. Since Australia is considered to be the best team in the world, it would be interesting to see if Australia has a similar metrics. On selecting Australia and sorting the data based on number of runs, we see that this is not the case. Australia has lost a lot of matches when they have scored heavily. What would be interesting to see is which team did Australia lose against? Let's see if it was South Africa. Oh yes, Australia did lose a lot of matches when they scored heavily when they were playing against South Africa. This gives us a very very clear indication of how many number of runs can a country assume to be safe while playing a match. As in, if they score these many number of runs, they go on to win the matches. On selecting various teams, we can see that South Africa is the only team which has a 100% of rec win record over 300 runs. Now, let's look at what this scatter plot can tell us. So let's just select some of the top scoring matches the team has played, both won and lost. Upon selecting these matches, the scatter plot reflects the innings played by the batsmen in each of these games. Now let's select an area that says that the runs scored by a batsman were around 65 or more. As we can see, Virendra Sehwag, V Sehwag stands out from the rest of the players. Another thing that we can actually figure out from this visualization is the kind of finishers. Finishers are the player who bat at the rear end of the innings. They get very fewer balls to score runs and it is upon them to take the team home. Most of the times they do not get an opportunity to play too many number of balls, but they have to score quickly. So, we choose this area between 40 to 90. And we choose all those players who have scored runs between 40 to 90 at more than a run a ball. As we can see, MS Dhoni and SK Raina stand out as some of the best finishers the game has had. It can also be an interesting metric to see how a particular player plays against a certain opposition. So let's choose Pakistan as the opposition. Now, if we go ahead and select the area of runs between 70 to the topmost number of scores, we see that Yuvraj Singh and Virendra Sehwag have almost won all the matches whenever they have played and scored runs in the area of 70 and above, whereas MS Dhoni and Sachin Tendulkar do not have that good a record. It is also interesting to see the Sachin Tendulkar has more number of innings in this particular area. That means, on average, he scores more number of runs against Pakistan. So it is interesting to see how Sachin Tendulkar actually performs better against Pakistan as an individual and has more number of innings in this high-scoring area. But it is Yuvrat Singh and Virendra Sehwag who ensure that the team win. Now, if we change the opposition to New Zealand and then select the same area, we see that the metric changes. Yuvrat Singh goes down. He has just played one inning of interest. 
whereas Virendra Sehwag still holds the same position. Now, <clears throat> now let's look at this stag area chart at the bottom. This gives us an overview of the form the team has been playing in. As we can see, in 2011 and 2013, Team India was performing really well. They were also the years when, in 2011, India won the International Cricket World Cup, and in 2013, India won the ICC Champions Trophy. So in 2012, India did not really perform well. What could be the reasons behind this? So if we hover over each of these batsmen, we can see the Sachin Tendulkar, who was considered to be the god of cricket, actually decided to retire in 2012. Virinder Sehwag was also dropped from the team. Yuvraj Singh suffered from cancer and had to take leave from the team and go for his treatment. Interestingly, Rohit Sharma, who made his debut in 2007, played exceptionally well in the year 2013 when he was promoted as the opener of the team after the retirement of Sachin Tendulkar. Also, since the other player, Virinder Sehwag, was dropped, Shikhar Dhawan made his way into the team and he also performed exceptionally well in 2013 and that led to Team India performing extremely well in the year 2013. Sri Lanka played some of the worst cricket in their last 10 years in, in the year 2016. The reasons are pretty clear. Their three most prolific batsmen, Jai Vardhane, Delshan and Sangakara, all retired at the same time in 2016. Another important fact to note is New Zealand had an exceptionally good 2015. It was also the first time they ever became the finalists in an International Cricket World Cup. The stacked area chart also gives us an option to get the details on demand and find out how each of these players have scored in that particular year. There are a lot of important metrics in visualization and analysis of a cricket game. We have selected one of those which is considered to be the most important in the, in the game today. It would be interesting to correlate some of our findings against some of the other important metrics and that we propose as the future work. For now, we hope that this video was informative and useful. Thank you so much.